Hello, this is Debbie Kay with the League of Women Voters of Portland, and you are watching Video Voters Guide. We're here with Metro East Community Media to interview candidates running in the May 2020 primary election. With me today is Ricky Ruiz, running for State Representative District 50. Welcome, Ricky. Thank you for having me. You're very welcome. Tell us about yourself, why you're running for this office. Yeah, well, my name is Ricky Ruiz. I am a proud lifelong Russian resident. Uh, both of my parents migrated from Michoacan, Mexico in the 1980s. I've made Oregon their home. Uh, I was proud, I'm a proud uh, graduate from a rental school district. Uh, moved on to go to Portland Community College, Warner Pacific University, and became the first to graduate from both high school and college from my family. Uh, I made the decision, I fast forward to, um, after I graduated from college, I made a decision to run for school board and uh, found myself in three-way race and fell in love with public office since then. And that was in 2017. I've been reelected again to serve in the rural school district board of directors in 2019. And now I am running for state representative for House District 50. Uh, I am running for state representative because I truly believe that District 50 is in need of a homegrown leader who was raised in Gresham. Uh, we need our next state representative to be ready to legislate and, and, and will, well, will be perhaps one of the most important legislative sessions in 2021. Uh, I, given the fact that we're right now in the middle of a, of a pandemic with COVID-19, we're seeing a lot of different uh, challenges from our schools, from our economy, from our health care systems. And I believe that I am well equipped and I am ready to get to work be able to represent the working, the working class, our low income families, and all constituents of District 50 in the legislation session. Thank you. Well, you may, and certainly it is an immense challenge for everyone, including the effective and efficient administration of Oregon state government. How would you propose to meet the challenges that it presents? Well, I think one of the most important parts here is that uh, none of us were ready to deal with the pandemic that we're dealing with with COVID-19. I, I think some of the challenges, and I will, I will be honest with you, I, I, I'm living a privileged life right now. The fact that I still have a job, the fact that I'm still able to use internet to able to get on this call, uh, the fact that I still have food on the table and I'm not worried about bills, that's a, that's, a, that's a privilege that I have that I know many of our constituents across the state of Oregon do not have. Um, Oregon is you know, making amazing steps to halt the spread of this, this COVID-19. And a number of effects that have been platooed by partnering up with California and the state of Washington. Uh, I believe that we as a state are doing everything that we can to work together and be able to uh, find proper, proper solutions and proper uh, steps in order for us to, as a state to come back stronger than ever. Um, I, I, I'm very confident that Leaders across the state of Oregon are going to find creative ways uh, to come together, work together, and make sure that all Oregonians are in a place that they were before, even if not, or if not, in a better place. Thank you. Traditionally, the legislature has conducted the decennial redistricting process, which will occur next year in 2021. Are you comfortable with the current redistricting process? And if not, how would you seek to change it? Well, redistricting after the census is a very necessary thing to do, and I completely support it. Uh, Oregon does not look the same as it did 10 years ago or 20 years ago. It, we can go off back several years, and we're constantly changing, and we're constantly growing, and we're constantly, we're constantly seeing a new, diverse communities uh, being, being uh, part of the state of Oregon. Uh, it's a good thing to consider to change districts and redistricting, I think. We need to make sure that if we were to do that and when we do that, uh, we do it in a way that is equitable, that is uh, fair for all the residents who live in those prospective districts and really figure out a way that that districts are being uh, redistricted in a way that uh, folks are well represented and folks are well counted within their district. Uh, and uh, what's one of the things I'm very eager to learn in the 2021 legislation, and I fully support redistricting uh, all our districts. And I, I also know that there might be a new congressional seat, which is going to be also one thing that uh, I'm excited to see how we as a state go about that. Thank you. 
What are your thoughts on cap and trade proposals intended to mitigate climate change? Are they a good idea or not and why? Well, there's no question in my opinion when we, we need to invest in energy solutions uh, that, that money and where money can stay in the state of Oregon and help expand our economy. Uh, we have to consider a more comprehensive approach, one that includes jobs to a cleaner environment. Uh, our workers are definitely depending on it across the state of Oregon. Uh, we, must, we must also appreciate the health implications of continuing uh, to allow water and air pollution in our state. Uh, without being compensated for that dam the damage that is caused is a really, it's a really big deal for us. Uh, sustainability isn't is simply a matter of protecting uh, our communities and our natural areas, but also safeguarding the future of the Oregon economy. Thank you. What is your view of the suggestion that the legislature suspend collecting the taxes that will fund the 2019 Student Success Act? Well, the primary purpose of the Student Success Act uh, money that is supposed to be coming into our schools is to increase academic achievement uh, for all students and be able to decrease uh, equitable disparities in these students' mental and behavioral needs in the classroom. Uh, with COVID-19, uh, it would make sense uh, to suspend the collection of taxes since schools are forced into a distance learning for all. But however, uh, I think it's very necessary to send those same amounts of, of dollars to help make distance learning more equitable for all. I know a lot of my district families and a lot of my district uh, students do not have access to internet, do not have access to a computer, do not have access to any source of support uh, from home. A lot of families are becoming tutors, a lot of parents are becoming tutors, and they're having to learn the same way that their students are learning. And that's been a, a huge challenge. You know, I, my hat's off go to, my hat's off is, is going to all the school districts across East County and across the state of Oregon. Uh, they're doing everything that they can with what they have. But I believe that uh, Student Success Act money can go in, uh, to support this uh, better way of distance learning. And once we're done with this pandemic, uh, a lot of our students are going to need the mental health supports. Uh, you know, staying inside for a lot of these students, a lot of these youth is not easy. Uh, a lot of these, I mean, my lot of, a lot of these students maybe don't even have a home and they're couch surfing. They're, they're still living in the streets and they're having to live in a completely different environment. Uh, those resources are very crucial. And that is, I, that's, that's why I believe that student success money still should be collected. Uh, and it makes sense because our students depend on it. Thank you very much. That's all the time we have. I'm glad to have gotten to talk with you. Thank you very much. This has been Video Voters Guide. The primary election is Tuesday, May 19th. Please be an informed voter. Visit vote411.org to learn more about the candidates and ballot measures on your ballot and exercise your right to vote. Thank you for joining us today.